Welcome to day two, or part two, of our Gaming on Linux series where I'm trying to see if I can switch over full-time my gaming rig to Linux. That way we can get away from Windows, stop dealing with the Windows updates, and explore the new technology growth that has happened in the gaming field, especially some of the recent releases. Before we get to Steam Play, in this episode, we're going to be tackling setting up Lutris, which is a tool that lets you, uh, you basically use pre-built user scripts to get your games running with the DXVK and other Wine-related tools to run your Windows games on Linux, and specifically setting up Overwatch, which is a game I play a lot, as well as try a couple other games, things like that. Just get DXVK, you know, Vulcan stuff, Lutris, and specifically Overwatch working, and we'll see what other games we can tackle as well. Let's jump into it. Alright, so theoretically, installing Lutris is fairly simple. You go to the website and you can either compile it yourself or download the pre-built binaries from this OpenSUSE hosted site. They have one for Ubuntu specifically. That is what I did. And then, in some cases, there are dependencies you need to set up. For example, with Battle.net related things for Blizzard and Activision, Blizzard Activision games, there's a couple specific... Uh, dependencies it wants you to install first and so that's like the microsoft fonts and some a couple utilities so i went ahead and did those and at this point i'm already too frustrated to care about showing the easy way i'm doing this through the terminal it gives you the command based on your operating system and in theory you should be good to go you can browse the lutris listing of things you can install extra tools if you'd like or you can go to the lutris page for overwatch and tell it to install However, especially on my second operating system reinstall here, I just ran into so many errors and trouble getting Battle.net to even open or run. It just kept throwing some weird errors, and then Battle.net would uh, open up and say it couldn't verify a digital signature, and the install would just be gone, and I'd have to start all over. It took me about four or five times. Along the way, I kept installing, like in the error, it would list things that are missing, so I would start installing those as some form of, like, dependencies didn't entirely figure out why, but the big things that came down to me were making sure, again, you have those BNet dependencies from the Lutris page, but to go in and add the PPA for Wine and update Wine to 1.7, and then install Wine Tricks, the VC Runtimes, and .NET, as you are seeing on the page. And by in somewhere along the way of installing all of those, and then managing the versions of Wine and Lutris by going to the uh, dedicated runners tab, and configuring wine and there's a few different versions and the staging versions and the e-sync versions i just went ahead and enabled all of those to be available and eventually the install took and battle.net ran and then i was able to download overwatch which downloaded ridiculously fast and install and run that theoretically this is supposed to be like one button it's not for me for some reason it was the first time that i ran it ironically enough it was actually when i first ran it with Lutris on my original operating system thing, I didn't have to think twice about it. So you may not need this. I definitely recommend installing those dependencies for Battle.net and then just installing Overwatch from the Lutris scripts and see if it works for you. Again, it didn't for me. And then even then, I think I had to manually go in. Like first, you need to open the game without DXVK enabled, which will be OpenGL mode. However, OpenGL mode runs ridiculously slowly, slowly and laggy, but you kind of need to like have it set up to process the game and recognize your graphics card first, then close Overwatch, right-click the properties for it in Lutris, go to DXVK, and enable a recent version, either 0.65 or 0.70 at the time of recording, and then launch Overwatch, and it's playable. It runs really well, nowhere near as well as it does in Windows, unfortunately, but it does run very well on my hardware. The translation is fairly efficient. I did, however, run into a new bug, wherein running it at full screen 1440p frame rate was fine but it was as if, it was as if my mouse sensitivity was on the lowest possible setting i could i was like flinging my mouse across the desk to try to get it to move the cursor and it wouldn't work at all and i tried getting help from some people in hex dsl's discord and things like that turns out the issue was just running it in 1440p at all running it in windowed mode it worked fine Running it in borderless full screen at 1440p or full screen at 1440p, it just would not work. Dropping it to 1080p, it immediately worked way better. However, 
A, that's not my monitor's native resolution, so that's not a perfect solution, and B, mouse sensitivity is actually different based on the resolution that you're running to a degree. And it's not technically supposed to be that way, but it was a little bit more sensitive at 1080p than at 1440 when I was used to it, but it was at least working. DXVK translation from the original DirectX, it's playable. You do have to play for like an hour or so, apparently, depending on your hardware, to get the textures and shaders prefetched and saved to disk, um, at which point the performance will actually improve quite a bit, and you have to do this every update, which is a little annoying, but it is working. Next, I went ahead and installed Chrome and Discord so I could get this looking more like my proper gaming machine, both of which you can go to their respective websites and download a .deb installer file. These are basically like MSI installers on Windows or EXE installers. You just click it, hit install package on the, Windows that, on the window that pops up, type in your password, let it install. Boom, I have Chrome, I have Discord, it recognizes my audio hardware. We're good to go. Went ahead and got signed into Chrome to sync things across. Sweet. The next game I wanted to tackle was... Guild Wars 2. Guild Wars 2 is an MMO that I have played for a long time, haven't really played a whole lot recently, but wanted to play with my fiance, and that was an interesting experience. For whatever reason, and I don't know if this is wine file system related or what, but I was able to just one click from Lutus's website, install the Guild Wars installer and get it going, but it maxed out downloading most of the time at like four megabytes per second, which on my gigabit fiber network isn't anywhere near my full speed and took forever because the game is huge and it it eventually picked up a little bit but it took like hours to download this game for some reason but once it was running it runs decently well this is a DirectX 9 game so DXVK doesn't even really work with it it's just using the OpenGL translation using the Lutra script it does work it's playable I haven't noticed any major hitches just performance can be kind of wonky in normal areas it seems to run all right again not full speed that I get on Windows, but still playable and usually 60 FPS or higher, which again, I'm on a 1440 or 144 hertz panel, so eh. But whenever you get to super C uh, CPU heavy areas like uh, major cities where there's a lot of models to render on on screen, and I imagine the big world versus world area would be hell, uh, frame rate was really bad. Like it was like 24 FPS lock. And I looked through the forums and saw a couple other people complaining and no one really had any solutions. I don't know what a better option is other than this, and it seems to work and to be the best possible option at the moment, but it's not great. Another thing I noticed was despite what I had originally been told, going to the NVIDIA X server settings and changing your display configuration does not save for when you reboot, which is a big annoyance. So if you save it, you need to save it to your X configuration file. You need to back out to the root of your drive when you're browsing, go to etc. or etc. I assume that's what it stands for. Uh, X11. And xorg.conf. Merge with existing file, hit save, type in your password. I'm going to reboot, and theoretically this should be applied. Now we have rebooted, go into NVIDIA server settings, it seems to be applied, display config, yep, 1440p, 144Hz. So that is the step that I left out. Thank you to those of you who mentioned it in the comments of the last episode. Alright, next up we're going to try installing Warframe, another online game that I play fairly frequently. It supports DirectX 9 through 11, I believe, I could be wrong on that. Um, and it runs all the way as far back as Windows XP. I've played it myself. so. I would like to think that this would be easy enough to get set up, but I honestly am not certain. We're going to tell it to go ahead and open with Lutris here. It reads the installer script, hit continue. Next. I'm going to download what is required. Now this is using the Steam version, not the dedicated Windows client, which I find a little curious. As I tried, which we'll see in the next episode, but I tried using Steam Play for this, it didn't really work out. Well, it just didn't launch. I didn't really look any further yet. So what it's doing is it's using the Windows version of Steam instead of the Linux Steam with Steam Play. So it's installing its own copy of that with Wine. 
Ideally, that will help the emulation, I guess. Alright, so I've signed into Steam, and it's going to access the game data from my Steam account and try to set it up here. And keep in mind, if you install something with Lutris, you do not need it through the native Steam Linux client, so you will want to uninstall that copy, as it will just be wasting space on your drive. Any day now. Alright, this is my, like, second or third time trying to use the Steam version. I wasn't paying attention. There is one for the standalone client. It just sits there at installing game data forever. Nothing's happening on my disks or network, so I went ahead and canceled that. We're not going to use it. We're going to use the script for the standalone version, see if we have any more luck. Async DXVK ready. It requires C or U or R or I on your system. What? We're going to go ahead and pre-install these uh, requirement packages here. I don't think it's going to make a difference, but XZUtils, curl, and MD5 sum. Helps when you spell things right. Okay, MD5 sum isn't found. We'll see what happens without it. Hey, progress. Installation directory, downloading redistributables. All right, should theoretically be working this time, fingers crossed. Installing game data. Maybe something will actually happen. We are still not downloading anything though. That is my concern. There we go. Applying DirectX component workaround. Changing to Windows 7, interesting. And also for those of you who are more advanced out there, these are pre-built user-submitted scripts. These aren't, you know, this isn't the only way to run the game. So theoretically, there might be a better way than this. But we're going to go ahead and launch it, see if the launcher actually opens, because that would be further than Steam Play got me. That's a little scary. It's downloading things. Oh, this appears to be handling what the actual launcher would handle in terms of downloads, because I can see it's downloading like sound effects and things like that. So this is downloading the game files, just without the usual front-end launcher. So that's interesting. All right, well, the entire game, I'm pretty sure, is like 30 gigs. We're only 2.5 down, so I will see you on the other side. All right, the download seems to have stopped, and it's doing some de <laughs> defragmenting of the cache for some reason. But we should be close to being able to play. It has downloaded 20.5 gigs, not 30. So, woo, that was off. We actually have a, a game screen, a loading screen. We're going to get to play. What is this? I'm impressed the game is running. Holy crap. It's working. We're at 1080p at over 100 frames per second. There's still, like with Overwatch, there's probably going to be some delays and jitter when you're first moving around a whole lot as it tries to load in the textures and things like that. But oh my god, it's working! And it looks so good! Now, I can't really show you full screen at the moment because I don't actually have a proper capture card set up here. I'm using OBS NDI to record this. Uh, long story about 1440p, 144Hz capture stuff. But this is working. I'm actually going to play a mission here, so let me switch microphones. All right, so we're just going to play, my mouse sensitivity is all kinds of screwed up, but we're just going to play a super quick mission here just to showcase it working. Interception mission. We can do this. Here's CPU load. Again, this is an 8700K. It's about 40% utilization for OBS NDI and Lutris here across the board. There you see those huge hitches. This is its prefetching shaders and textures and things like that, I believe. This is a similar issue to Overwatch. After you play a bunch, it should be fixed. After you play a bunch. After you play for a little while, enough for it to generate this stuff. Because you can see the average frame rate is like 140-something. Like, it's, it would match my 144 hertz just fine. There's this weird thing. My mouse isn't wanting to go all the way over sometimes. It's like I'm hitting a wall. Probably a windowed issue. Y'all gonna revive me? Am I neutralizing it while down? <laughs> Lol. Can a, can a brother get a revive? I really wish this game saved your mouse sensitivity. It is really hard flying around here with my mouse on like a 180 degree swivel here. That's not a Lutris problem. That's a Warframe problem. I don't think it saves those kinds of settings to your profile for some reason. Oh, this is like a no shields mode. No wonder I'm dying. Jesus. Yeah, that was really laggy. Yeah, see, I, 
I want to, part of my goal here is to actually be like a realist with this stuff. And it's very much laggy as hell right now. However, the same experience happened with Overwatch, and after not too much gameplay, like after a few matches, it was fine. So, while obviously it's not just going to magically be perfect, I firmly believe after enough... Ow. You know, after you cash enough, it's not going to have a problem keeping up. Because it's able to render the frames, it's just stuttering at certain points. This is a playable experience. I need some health, please. Man, I did not realize this was no shields when I signed up for it. Yeah, walk away. You don't want none. My tiny little pistol. <laughs> yeah, see, I keep... I, I missed all those shots because I couldn't... Yeah, right now, I can't move my... I couldn't move my mouse to the left anymore. It was really weird. I could still be a weird mouse thing. Maybe I'm holding it weird. Or it's... An issue with Lutris, I'm honestly not certain. I really need a better melee weapon. I'm certain of that one. Dang it. No, not again. I've not played in a while. I can't aim. That's the game right there. I, can't, I can only aim 180 degrees. Y'all really not going to revive me. Y'all are the worst teammates, man. See, like... It's working fine. I think I'm getting some reflections or something. There might be cat hair or something on my mouse pad. I don't think that's Lutris related with my weird aiming thing. Oh, I've switched. How do I switch back to... F oh, I'm in left-handed view. Ooh, I am about to die. Teamwork! This has been the hardest mission. Especially for a random, what was supposed to be easy mode mission. Holy guacamole, Batman. We might lose at this rate. Losing an alert mission is kind of embarrassing. Oh, they left. They gave up on us. I can't say I blame them. I'm on fire. I'm going to die again. Yep, I'm going to die. We did it. We finally did it. Holy crap, we just barely won that round. Jesus, that was supposed to be an easy mission, not a clinging to my life. I don't have any revives left, either. That was insane, dude. Y'all right, can clean up. No, oh, no, you can't. You're struggling just as much as I am. Alright, so that makes this conclusion time for day two, episode two, what have you. Lutris is pretty cool. It's a really cool tool. It reminds me of the excitement I had for play on Linux. Uh, five or more years ago when I discovered that. Uh, it's pretty cool. Having user submitted scripts and keeping them up to date is really cool, but that means that compatibility is purely based on the popularity of a game or the popularity of it with people who know what they're doing. So more obscure games are going to have a lot harder time getting those kind of scripts going unless someone who's really good with developing, you know, putting that together happens to really like that game. Thankfully, a couple games I wanted to do worked out. Overwatch runs pretty good, but you got to put up with crappy performance for the first hour or so. Good Wars 2 runs pretty good, but not full speed on Windows at all, and big CPU intensive areas just get crippled compared to Windows performance. Same with Warframe. Uh, the whole first mission there was pretty stuttery. I'll do some more playing and try to update in the future episodes as I go, but I'm hoping if someone has if someone has experience with this game on Linux, let me know in the description or in the comment section. I'm hoping that's a texture prefetch thing pre too, but seeing it run pretty natively, you know, not it's not native, but seeing it run on the desktop with everything on Linux was pretty cool. It was fun. I just hope that prefetch thing doesn't take too long because it, it, it'll run like really smooth for a few minutes and then jitter a whole lot and have to, you can tell it's like downloading things or reloading things or whatever. So ho hopefully that gets resolved, but it's a pretty cool system. It's not perfect. It's not... Like, if you're truly worried about performance, I don't think it replaces things. I left this light on giving me raccoon eyes. Oh, well. <laughs> That's actually a lot better lighting. Damn. Anyway, it's pretty cool. I don't think it's ready for some people to switch to full-time, especially if you're doing anything competitive on those games. 
but it's fairly simple to set up, and it's not that, you know, as long as it works, it works. But you have to choose your scripts carefully. Like with Warframe, I had to... There were two different options. I thought the Steam option would be better. That one refused to work for me. The standalone client worked. With Overwatch, I ran into a lot of issues getting Battle.net up and running the first time, and I had some people comment with that as well. Hopefully, the steps I went through helps you find your way. No guarantee. Uh, but it's certainly a big step forward. So in the next episode, we'll be looking at an even bigger step forward, which is Steam Play, or their integration of what they call Proton for wine and things like that, which will in theory, give you a whole huge catalog bump. But as I already mentioned, Warframe through Steam with Proton didn't work at all. But I'm thinking that might be an interesting exception since even with the Lutris version, it doesn't load the initial launcher client. So that is likely what the problem is with the Steam Play version, is whatever that client does to initially download updates isn't just can't be emulated very well right now. And so that is the problem. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, I have a massive Steam library, and it's kind of overwhelming sometimes to go through and try to figure out which ones are Windows exclusive, not Linux exclusive, and test them out. But that's what we're going to be tackling in day three. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your support on the first episode of the series. I did the first episode was rough, and some of my recordings got jacked up. I, ugh, but you guys were super supportive for the most part, and. It's doing really well, so I greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. Comment, like, subscribe, all that jazz. Go check out my talk with Wendell if you're interested in learning more about the Steam Play update, and I will see you in the next one.